Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Nelson, you're watching h &L, and if you're new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. You guys would be helping my channel grow more and more and more so I can bring you these great episodes that I have coming up ahead. It's been very difficult as you guys know, the heat is unbearable. As I speak right now, I just checked, we're almost at 94 and it's only 10 o'clock in the morning believe it or not. <laughs> it's really hot. That's why I'm wearing tank top because there's no way. By the time I do the whole show and tell, this shirt will probably be all damped. Unfortunately, it's the Miami way. So <laughs> we got to deal with what we got to deal with. But all in all, I got to say, I have no complaints. It has been very hot, but you know what? Everything, as you can see in the background, is green, is looking beautiful. My orchids are blooming constantly. That's why I'm bringing you another What's in Bloom in August because some of the ones I showed you in the last one were not completely open and they are looking too beautiful not to show now. And there's new stuff also that's opening. Plus I've done some things around the yard, little by little. Uh, yesterday I worked maybe three hours out here in the yard and I was dead the rest of the day. So without further ado, let's go look at some blooms. All right guys. So we're gonna start here in the front. Now I do have my handheld device, which I haven't used in quite a while, and I don't have a lot of practice in it, but I do like it because it's a little bit smoother in the transition, as you can see when I turn. So anyways, this is the front of my terrace outdoors where I have my um, green, uh, or should I say the screen house right there, it's adjacent to it. It's where I keep a lot of my orchids. And then these are the ones that are a little more sensitive to the environment as far as water, uh, how much water goes on them, how much sun hits them. Um, so for you guys that have been asking me on my comments, yes, move your orchids around, especially during uh, season changes, like from summer to fall to winter to spring, because what happens is the sun shifts and sometimes it may shift in a spot that your orchid may not like it. Like it. So be always very weary of the temperature and environmental changes around you so that way you can change your orchids. It's okay to change them around. You know, they, they actually do well um, in many cases. Now this one is one that this is the second time this beautiful flower, oh, or should I say orchid blooms for me. This was from Mr. Dave from Morning Dove uh, Nursery or Dove Nursery, I always get it wrong, but anyway. <laughs> He's been selling these for quite a while now. They're called uh, Josephine Van Brero. And what I love about this is that this is the flower they use to do a lot of crosses. So there's a lot of crosses, especially in like in the Moats um, collection, you're gonna see a lot of crosses with JVB in it or Josephine Van Brero. And it's just a very pretty, pretty flower with great tones. It's gorgeous. And then this one on top here, it doesn't have a bloom yet, but this one blooms for me a lot. And then, and there's this, sorry, I'm trying to deal with the heat and the, <laughs> I'm already suffocating. I hope my phone can handle it. There's a new uh, spike coming out. And so here, I'm gonna show you, see how, it says right there, just JVB with a Kulawati fragrance. Kulawati fragrance is also used a lot. So they took two of their most used uh, strains and they put them together. And this is an actually, this is a, a gorgeous, gorgeous um, Vanda. So once this one's all ready to, um, to bloom, I will let you guys see it. All right, now, all right, let's see if I can do this all in one take. <laughs> all right, guys, as I did show you before, I had shown you this beautiful rustic spots, CrossFit's um, Kelly Leia. And the reason I'm showing you again, and I like to do this in my Wets and Blooms a lot, is because you don't get to see most of the transitions of these flowers. You know, some of these flowers, they just change from one color to the next and you guys may miss it out because you only see it in one what's in bloom so this one which is one of my favorite color changing ones is now going into like that orangey yellowy color i was saying but when it first opened what color was it it was red it was like a cranberry 
velvety red. You know, maybe I should put a side-by-side -side on this. Let me put it right there and see. Um, so the one on the right is how it was before. And then obviously the one on the left is how it's now. So there is a big difference in the way they, um, they change in tone. Now down here, I got this cutie little pie that I purchased. I believe this was from Smiley. I got this from Smiley. It's a Neo Phoenicia Falcata. Falcata. Oh, please. Hold on. Let me do this like this. There. Now I can use both hands. So that's the tag. And I got the pot from none other than Orchids365. My friend Roxy. If you guys want to reach out to her, just go on Instagram. Orchids underscore 365. And she makes these beautiful 3D pots. I love them. And I had gotten two Neo Phoenicias during the Tamami Orchid Show. And this is one of them. Look how pretty that is. And the fragrance is so sweet. It's like sugar cookie sweet. And I'm sorry if it's a little, I, I, I don't know how this is gonna turn out because I haven't used this in a long time. I mean, I, I, I guess I'm a little better than before actually. It's like riding a bike. So then I have this other Neo Phoenicia that I got from Brethren's. And then this pot came from my buddy Josh over at the Orchid Den. So I got into my whole Neo Phoenicia thing during the Tamami Orchid Fest. And um, that's the result of one of them, which I think it's really pretty. All right, let's go onwards. I did show you guys these um, antler dendrobiums last time I was here that are super hard to focus on. <laughs> Well, it's just doing very, very pretty. I want to show you guys, see what angle I can pick that would give you a nice view. And this one, I did feature it last time. And like I said, I'm going to oh, hold on. Here we go. You know, it's funny because this thing moves on its own. So it, it's almost like a, a drunk driver. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> I do like the smoothness of it, but it's not very user friendly. I will say that. So if you guys get one of these, I'm going to tell you, you need to practice a lot because it's not user friendly at all. All right. Uh, there it is. Dendrobian Goldii with Marbellianum. Yeah, I guess to show you a tag, I may have to do this. Hopefully I won't do this on the hanging ones. And you know what? I'll be right back. All right, guys, I had to stop it because the way I anchored the phone on it, it was hitting the, I think the zoom. So it wasn't letting me zoom properly. I was trying to figure out why, and that's what it was. So this is just a tester. I just want to see how this turns out, this, this whole segment with this handheld thing. I want to see how smooth it is because it is a lot smoother once you output it. <clears throat> so I'm just going to give it a chance. I'm going to give it a second chance. All right, we're inside my greenhouse. Here, let me pull further back. And for you guys who are newbies, this is my greenhouse. Well, one of them, my screen house, which is actually growing a lot. I mean, if you guys go to my first videos and you look at the space, it was not this filled out. There was so much space in here. I mean, all my fiases are doing amazing, so they take up a lot of space. That's my Holy Ghost. Uh, Peristeria lotta, which is doing wonderful, giving me a bunch of new growth. And so let's go right here. I'm trying to get to my, my friendly back plant. <laughs> here she is. How beautiful. And this is a new one on the other side, which is in the front. It's starting to open. Here we go. Look at this, how gorgeous. such a great great flower and guys this is a family to I believe it's the yam family of uh, this plant even though it may look sort of like a exotic orchid it is not it is a very tropical water loving plant uh, I water this baby every single day I fill it all the way to the top let it spill out and then repeat again the next morning and that's how I keep her looking. Let me see if I can 
I'm on a wide angle and she's still <laughs> filling up the whole thing. So look how gorgeous she looks. She's very healthy, very green, and the flowers are looking beautiful. And all you need to do is feed her every time I feed my orchids, I feed her. I do 20-20-20, cow mag, and, um, and now I'm using a lot of seaweed. Um, seaweed juice, I guess is what they call it. Um, mixed into my food and I've noticed a huge difference on my leaves. Everything looks a lot greener and a lot happier. Like this gorgeous dendrobium here that was gifted to me by my good friend over in Hawaii. <clears throat> uh, Jeremy, he owns S and W orchids and he had sent me this uh, as a gift and it was all these were filled with flowers. So if you guys haven't seen that unboxing, I was I, I was literally speechless. I couldn't talk when I saw it. I had never seen so many beautiful flowers and the fragrance. And if you guys want to see what it looks like, just Google this name. Which I'm sure I'm already putting an inset. <laughs> So you guys can see what it looked like. It was really beautiful. But I have a feeling that I'm going to get another burst of flowers. Because it's getting ready for next season's blooming. Now in here, I had shown you guys my Paxorn, right? If you go back to this month's What's in Bloom, this one was just starting to open. And I try to explain to you guys, guys, it's really a lot prettier than what you see it here. Once it opens, it's just beautiful. Look at those tones. And it is very fragrant because it has that wonderful Mimi Palmer fragrance. This one I got over at <clears throat> Kroll Smith. That's the tag. And when you see that, FCC for you guys that don't know that means it is the highest highest award that an orchid could receive by the American Orchid Society this is a very respectable flower and so when you see this that means you just bought a plant that was possibly either cloned or usually it's cloned because they want them to be exactly the same um, from the winner so the winner actually the flowers looked like this or very close to this so that's when you buy an orchid that you see fcc you're buying an orchid that the parent where it came from won um, a very good award <laughs> let's just say <laughs> and there's something i wanted to talk to you guys about later on once i'm done here hold on i'm going i call it drunk camera <laughs> my camera goes drunk it goes the opposite way of where i'm going now, I did showcase this lipstick plant last time I, I did my What's in Bloom. So if you guys want to see more of it, just go to the, the previous one and you'll see more of those flowers. Here's some more spikes. There's And this I also previewed on my, uh, my Tulumia. Go to my previous one. Oh, look, I just noticed these. Hey, guys. They're way up there. See if I can, ah, here we go. Oh, Nelson. That's a beautiful, beautiful orchid, guys. This is the one that C from Sierra Madre gifted me a while back and I didn't have a name for it. It just said on the tag, it said Burgundy Spotted. Cream back, background, so that's what I put on there but it's a really pretty vanda. And up here, look, I just noticed this too. Oh my God, this is gonna be high up. Hold on, let me see. This is, oh, let's just bring it down. <laughs> let me see. I'll put it here because I have one to show you there too. Hold on. This is just starting to open. Let me see if you wanna do, oh. It's a little beat up because of the rains, but it's just starting to open. Eh, it's not, not worthy of showing yet. But this is a beautiful, beautiful uh, Philanopsis. I got this from Miss Lady Vanda. And um, I always say Miss Lady Vanda. It's Lady Vanda, by the way. And it's reclassified as a Philanopsis. It used to be called uh, Paul Shurima. Now it's uh, Philanopsis Doritis Red. 
And that's their red version, even though it looks fuchsia. But we'll go back to that one once it opens. I want to show you guys this beauty right here. Look at this and look at the basket, how perfect it goes. Again, this is from Orchids 365. She gifted me this the day that I got this uh, mini Vanda. Now I got this from my friends over in Tangerine Green Nurseries. They are international. They've come to uh, the Tamiami Orchid Show. And um, they have brought some really beautiful hybrids like this one. This one, Mr. Suwat himself, he's one of the brothers, a brother and sister. Hold on, let me, oh, come on, come on. There we go. That's the name. And it is mixed with Bangkok Sunset. That's why it has that prominent look of Bangkok Sunset. There we go, so pretty, huh? And it does have a beautiful fragrance. I love it. So anyways, I got this from them on my first interview. I, I wanted to interview them because they were um, newbies over at the show. And I just thought that it was very cool that they brought new Vandas to the table that you know are not commonly out there. They're created by them at their laboratories in Thailand. I believe it is Thailand. I always say Taiwan, but I, it's Thailand. Um, and I'm sorry if I got it wrong, guys because uh, I know they, they watch my channel. So this one, this is the second time it blooms for me. They do bloom uh, quite often. It gives you a nice little cluster. And best of all, look how compact that is. It's so, so pretty in that size. So I've been wanting them to come back because I want to talk to them some more about their, their Vandas how they cross them. I want to learn more about their company and expose them more to you guys because I think they have something really, really awesome to offer to the orchid world. And um, no one, not a lot of people here in the States know about them. And I think that hopefully through my channel, I could give them some type of recognition because I think they truly deserve it. And not only that, they're just amazing people. They're just so, so nice, so well grounded, so real that, you know, people like that, they deserve success. You know, they, they deserve that, that chance. All right, I want to go to this little puppy here. Look how cute this is. And this was also from another international um, guy. Now, I did buy this from Victoria's Orchid, but she got it from... Here, let me clean it because it's always dirty. <laughs> when I show it to you guys, there's always something on there. Joseph Wu Orchids. Now, Joseph Wu actually, and there's a name. Teresita had to have one of these in. She finally got one from Joseph Wu at the international show. And it was, it's so funny because she keeps sending me photos every time it blooms. She goes, look, it doesn't stop blooming. And it's true. One comes out, it'll be there for a super long time. And then once it's dying, you already have another bud behind it coming out. So it always has at least one flower. Terry's is doing good. She had three flowers. I had three on this one, but this is the last one already. It's been blooming for quite a while. And best of all, it doesn't get that much bigger. It's giving me a new spike here and a new growth, but it doesn't really get you know, so big that it's going to overtake like the gigantias that overtake your space. But this is what they call a pyloric. And pyloric means that the labellum right here is being mimicked by the two petals that are adjacent to the top, the closest petals. Now you have three different types of pyloric. This is what, what I believe they call a full pyloric, which means that all three look at almost exactly the same. If it wasn't that these are a little bit wider than this, it would be exactly the same. You have heavy pyloric, you have also have um, slightly pyloric. And I have like all three of them. This is my full pyloric. But this place here, um, Joseph Wu, if you want pyloric, he is the king of pyloric. He has so many that he's personally done himself. And I love that. I love that when you buy from him, you're buying something made by him. It's a beauty. It's very avatar-ish. <laughs> Now here, this, this gorgeous, gorgeous Oncidium, it's so, 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 I, I, I have a, 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 a soft spot for this one in my heart because he's probably one of the oldest ones I've had here and it's been through the ringer. He's been through every test that I've done to orchids. 
<laughs> and finally, I've given him a rest and say, you know what? This is where you're going to be. Now, this is a, a um, I kind of like did a little freedom of licensing here. <laughs> I'm doing my own design. It was in this little basket, but I needed it to be on something. And I actually used one of, of, of Josh's lily pads. And I truly, truly, truly like it. I did it there uh, only for a little bit, but I don't know. I like it. What do you guys think? Tell me. Am I crazy? <laughs> or does this actually look like it should go like that? I don't know. And, and also the practicality of it is awesome. The way it looks here on the, you know, hanging on this thing. It's just perfect. It's very stable. But anyways, enough with that. Here's the name. And yes, I have, I hate these things, by the way, this is never ending here and, and whatever this thing is called, these things never, never, never go away. <laughs> oh my God, they're everywhere and they overtake and they're not good for your orchid. So if you see them, take them out guys, because they steal, um, they do steal from the roots. You don't want to have anything in the roots, but the roots of your orchid. So it gave me two beautiful spikes. And it has a very, very awesome pattern, almost like leopard. I truly love this orchid. And I love it even more because it's been with me for so long. It used to be more here and it lost all this due to the fact that I had it in an area that got too much rainwater. And so I've learned that it likes rainwater as long as it's sporadic. Now, I already showed this, but it's already on its way out starting to drop flowers but I want to show it again because it's just so pretty this is happiness and I am happy when I see this happiness the flowers are ridiculously big look at that crazy crazy big now where are you my friend your tags I don't want to forget tags because then there you go Vanda Adesak happiness and I got this at the international show about, oh my God, like two years ago when I started doing the film, the the film, the episode. So I, I sprayed it with um, fungicide this month and I already see an improvement, major improvements. It was a little bit darker. Actually, if you go back to my, what's in, my last What's in Bloom, you'll kind of see it was a lot darker. But a lot of this also is heat stress because as you can see, they're all either in here. Hold on, let me, because I know I don't want to be swinging this thing around. Let me show you a view from here. Ooh, whoa, drunk camera, drunk camera. <laughs> I swear to you, I'm not doing that. And I will just cover this again only because this is my favorite Vanda fragrance of all time. The Vanda Ben fragrance. It's right down here. Vanda Ben fragrance. And these flowers are to die for. They smell like sugar cookie, vanilla shake powder. I don't know, <laughs> like cake, vanilla cake powder. My friend was here yesterday and I told her, what does it smell like? She says, it smells like vanilla, like and I said, does it remind you of vanilla shake? She goes, yes, that's exactly what it smells like. <laughs> so that guys, I guess it's not just me. It smells like sweet vanilla shake with like a slight bergamot fragrance in the back. It's just absolutely delicious. If you don't have, if you're an orchid collector and you have Vandas and you have space for Vandas and you don't have this one, I promise you the day you get this, you're just gonna be over the moon. It is one of the best, best, best Vanda orchids, hands down, blooms a lot. Here, I can show you. I don't even have to tell you. I can show you the proof, like I said, is in the pudding. All those are previous spikes, and I've only had this for a year. <laughs> or a year and a half, I think a year and a half. Because I went with, um, I think it was when I went with Debbie. Debbie Siegel. Hi, Debbie. Debbie Siegel, Teresita, Blanca, and and uh, lads and by the way guys i'm going to put this out there so you can rest assured of what's going on <laughs> a lot of people are you like where's lads where's blanca 
guys, we all have different lives. We are friends, <laughs> but, but we, we do things on our, you know, on our own time. And, you know, it's just summer is really hard to see anybody anyway. But um, everybody's doing good. It's not, you know, things evolve, things change. So if you don't see Laz or, Bla or Blanca, it's just they're doing their thing, right? You know, they got to do their thing. And um, there was a time that we had a, more time to get together and do all these things. But, you know, there's evolution in everything in life, you know, and I've learned to deal with evolution because I always used to be that kid that I wanted things to stay the way they were. And, you know, friends come and go and, and experiences come and go. It doesn't necessarily mean you lose your friends. It means that things get busier. I mean, Blanca's a grandmother, guys. I told her myself, if I had a baby, a grandbaby, you probably wouldn't see me doing these videos. I would be going crazy with my baby. But um, things happen and, and things change and we just have to embrace it and go with it. So just for you guys, I know I've gotten a lot of questions of where's Laz and where's Blanca and why are you guys doing videos together? We're all really, really busy. And we're all three of us are doing different things. But, you know, we'll see each other probably at the Apopka show or at the international shows, and it'll be fun. All right. So it's all good in the hood. <laughs> all right, guys. I've been showing you here the beautiful Mini Palmer cross with Tessalata, which is also from Crawl Smith. Hold on. Let me see. Here's a tag. It's getting so big that the tags are disappearing. There it is. Vanda Mimi Palmer cross with Tess Salata. And I got this at Cruel Smith the first time I went to their showroom. It was just, whoop, I'm not even paying attention. And I want to show you how big this thing is. Now, the roots on this were so long, it was double the length. I do this, I wet them really well, and I do a knot. And in that knot, right, I, I do another, like, let me see, let me show you. Within the knot, I do, I grab with um, tomato tape. This is called tomato tape. It's what they use for tomato vines. And that way it's very soft. It doesn't break through the, through the roots. And I wet it again once I'm done. I leave the Spanish moss because I do live in South Miami, Florida, close to the Everglades. You water this, literally, this, all this just got watered, by the way. Not even 10 minutes before me recording this, the whole thing got watered. And look how dry everything looks. Look, there's not a drop of water on those leaves. So here in Miami, Florida, if you have these same conditions that are very hot, you can wet your whole Vanda, it's no problem. But if you have it under a, a nursery or a screen house, or not a screen house, shade house, a place where it doesn't get harsh light or it doesn't get any uh, airflow, then you, you know, you can have a problem perhaps doing this because this does hold, as you can see, the band is dry, but then look how green the roots are because the roots are holding a lot of hydration. Plus the moss, the Spanish moss will help hold in some moisture, but this within another hour, it'll be dry. So I know some of you have asked me, what do I do with my roots? That's what I do. I usually, um, do a knot, wet it like this one. This is a um, Neo, Neo Stylist Loose Neary from Bang Yong. This one, the, the, the roots were just way, way too long. They were hitting the floor. And that you don't want. You don't, come on, drunk driver. <laughs> that you don't want. You never want the roots to hit the floor because that's how they can get a lot of diseases and, and bugs will eat it and God knows what else. So anyways, here in the Wets and Bloom area, I have these gorgeous. Now, I did have a viewer that asked me, how are your Miltonias doing? I know you got some. And it showed me that we can actually have Miltonias in South Florida. Yes, we can. Only a certain type. This is the, I always say this word, Morelli, Moreliana. <laughs> Spectabili Moreliana varied uh, Milton, Milton, Miltonia. <laughs> I'll put the name underneath. But anyways, what I love about this, which is very cool, it always has these little white slits on the bottom petals. See? And as it ages, you see it, guys? As it ages, they seal. And they turn into this. This is the oldest flower here. This has two more to go. It has this one and this one. So it's giving me six. And it's pretty interesting because I think... Oh, 
Last year, I'm in a jungle here, so it's kind of hard to navigate. Um, last year, I think it gave me 12, but I had divided this in half. A friend of mine actually gave me this orchid uh, and told me, just divide it in half, give me the other half, and keep the other half. So after it stopped blooming, because he brought it here blooming, which is crazy. <laughs> I waited for it to bloom, and then I divided it and gave it to him. So I wonder if his is doing well. I'm going to ask him if he can send me a picture, if his is doing... Um, as you know it's blooming i'm sure it's doing well if it's blooming um as much as mine is because if he has six i'm gonna crack up because last year it was 12. <laughs> all right i hear i don't i only have that oh well i have this this is another um oh my god philianopsis here let me oops. by the way i told you guys that because of the heat, I don't plan anything. I just come out here and start recording because it's just, I can't plant, it's too hot. So excuse all the craziness, you know, this is very in, improv at 100%. <sighs> okay, this is the uh, Philanopsis Pulsharima alba. I was gonna say Doritus, but Doritus was what it used to be called and they reclassified it. And I always thought it was more like a, like a Philanopsis and look how pretty that is. And she's almost completely, she needs like two, maybe three more flowers and she's good to go. All right, guys. So this is, this is what my workspace has become, by the way. <laughs> it's very organized, but it's, the plants are taking over. Yeah, I know a lot of you people are asking, why do you need so many plants? <laughs> well, just read my, my sign. Here you go. Here's your answer. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I just need them. <laughs> All right. Let me go, let's go back here. By the way, here's the new light coming into the yard. Let me see if I can move this up here. Look how much light we have. They cut all these branches down. Look where I have my arachnis has no leaves and she is, look how high she got. She's way up there and she's blooming. <laughs> so we'll go, over, you know what, let's go there now. Since the sun is hitting there and then we'll go to the quick tent. <sighs> When I flip this phone around, you're gonna see a different person. <laughs> it's so, so sweaty. Okay, I, I don't think I'll be able to go all the way up there. Let me see. Yeah, that's as close as it gets. And look at that. It just, it had those last two, or last three. It had two spikes actually. Oh, there's another flower there. But anyways, this is my arachnus. And the arachnus was, this is on a mango tree, or should I say now a mango stick? <laughs> because we wanted to cut this down to reduce the height so it starts growing a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. But we may not let this one grow um, too many leaves because we don't eat these mangoes. We really don't like them. They're the tiny, tiny little mangoes. They bring a lot of flies. And I really like it as a orchid stand <laughs> or an orchid uh, mount. So anyways, look how tall it's gotten. So I'm gonna have to start cutting up there and bringing down um, probably cut from this angle because once you cut an arachnus, it's going to shoot a new growth and out of that growth, you get a new spike. Nine out of 10, they will all do that. That's why I got so many spikes here. I don't know if you can see, they're all dry. That's from the last time I cut them. So, and I did some cleaning yesterday down here. My God, with the rains and the fact I haven't been back here, it looked like this. So I'm going to get to this one later today. Look at this. It's just crazy how much they've grown. So I did this one. Oop, come on, drunk driver. Come on. There you go. So I did this one, which has my bird's memorial, my little red cardinal that passed away a couple of months ago. And surprisingly enough, this beautiful, um, oh, hold on. This beautiful philodendron started growing there and it was from a previous one that I took out because it was dying it didn't like that spot and somehow a piece of the bulb I guess stayed there and look it's growing and yes it does have those freckles and as the sun hits it it gets more freckles really really nice even though it doesn't like full sun it does like some shaded sun all right guys let's go Whew. you know what let me just show you how this is looking because it is very pretty in the way the sun's hitting it now. This is prime time. 
This is my Bangkok Beauty that I got over at Sotoa. I did feature this one. I'll show you. I did feature this one in the last What's in Bloom. But again, you know, they were not completely open. And this is my Mokara sun, uh, Sunspot. So pretty. And I love this color combination. <laughs> cranberry and yellow, even though that's really red. That's more red than cranberry. And then my big mango tree that I showcased this uh, early summer when it had all those mangoes. Look what we did. We topped it off. We cut everything from the top. And now we get a lot of light coming in. These things, these are cuculatas. Um, I don't know, philodendron or... I, I know it's cuculata. They're getting crazy with the shaded sun. But what we're doing is we're trying to bring the height of the tree down so we don't lose so many crops. Because once they're too high, see like this one too? We did um, these here. And I had to really rearrange a lot of my plants under this tree, like my Hoyas and my um, Nepenzies, which are my, um, my carnivorous plants. Some of you asked me if I like carnivorous plants, I do. I have this one that I just got recently. Look how pretty that is. And this is, it's a cross. Sorry, buddy. This thing starts beeping at me when I'm not at the proper angle. I can't get away with certain things. And this is my variegated elephant ear that is doing really, really well now with the rains. It really has, I had it down to maybe one leaf. And I'm like, oh, with, remember when we had the storms a while back? And so I noticed the other day watering that it's giving me little babies. Look how cute that is. Yeah, it's not, you know, when it's handheld, I could do all these things, but it's just freaking out on me. <laughs> so then here is my quick tent. Now, as you guys can see, look how much we cut from the top. All this was filled up. All that. So I, I had them not take the center one. So I have some type of shade, but give me more of that afternoon light by three o'clock. It is really bright in there. Now, I do have all the windows and doors on screen because you can you can seal this, but here in Miami, I would not seal this. It's just way too hot here and it'll become an oven in here. I literally walk in here and it's actually slightly cooler because I do have, hold on. I have a fan. So if you guys have one of these um, tent greenhouses that does not have um, any type of good ventilation, you may want to put a fan inside. So that way all of your plants have some type of movement and it doesn't, you know, stagnant plants just calls for bugs and pests. You don't want pests. And as you can see, <clears throat> everything's doing really, really good here. My only critique, if I were to critique my own collection and things that I have here, of the way the plants look is this. But there's nothing I can do about it. I always talk about this. This is our water. Our well water here is calcium. Calcium. In it. Look how shiny it is when you just rub it off. So you can really see how healthy this plant is. This is my Spectabili dendrobium. I'm waiting for it to bloom. It's gotten beautiful, but see, I just wish our water, <clears throat> even though we have filters and everything, it's still, it's still, I would have to spend so much money on a super like RO type of water system that just cleanses everything. All right, let me show you what just opened this week. My Jim Clarkson. This is another beauty from Kroll Smith. You know, I feel like I'm repeating myself. <laughs> I have so many things from Kroll Smith. This bubble film, Jim Clarkson, I got to tell you guys, if you don't like bubble films because they stink, guess what? This one smells good. 
This is, I believe, one of the very few Bulba films that actually has a good fragrance. It's very light. I'm going to take a whiff now. Mmm, it smells like, um, a little bit like gardenias. It reminds me a little bit of gardenias, but a very light gardenia, but it's definitely there. It smells great. And then, of course, you know, that beautiful cranberry and yellow combination that I promote so much. <laughs> It is absolutely gorgeous and it has been blooming now for the past few months it blooms one or two then they die off and it gives me another one and then it gives me another two so i wish it would like burst in blooms you know but then you would lose all your blooms you get all your blooms at once that's the the caveat to the whole thing now here i have a gift oh my gigantias you know what i'm just gonna do it down here my gigantias are blooming beautifully this year let me see if I can, because the light is in the back. Oh, let me see. Yeah, that'll probably work. Woo! <laughs> this is difficult. All right, guys. This was a gift from my buddy Hayden last year when I turned one year with my channel. This was at the Fairchild Tropical Gardens where they always have Orchids in Bloom Festival. And um, that's where I always celebrate my, my anniversaries because that's where it all started. And Hayden told me, pick any of these. So I was a little bit humble and I picked like this small little orchid and he looked at me, he goes, why are you picking that one? I go, oh, because just to give you a chance, it, it was already closing time. And he goes, no, no, we're, we're, I don't wanna take all this stuff home. Take, take this one, I think this one you're really gonna like. And look at the size of this, by the way, it's massive. It wasn't this big, obviously, when he gave it to me, but I am so glad he changed my mind. Yes, fine, yes, I got it, I got it. I don't know, guys. I think, I think I'm ditching this thing. <laughs> Tell you what, watch this. Okay, we ditched the handheld <laughs> device. Let me do this one, because the phone is very hot too, and I think that it's about to shut down because of the heat. This is the one that I got with Terra Seed. I don't know if you guys remember, over at, oh, you know what, I'm sorry, I'm sorry because of the whole incident. I forgot to show you guys what this is. This flower, this um, beauty that was given to me by Hayden. That's the name, it has a very long name. It's probably one of those special, um, I think it's one of those special crosses that Frank Smith uh, decided to create. It's, it comes across that way. Now this was at Chang Huang Orchids, again. I think I featured something else before. And this is called the Bellina Fire Shape. Because there's many different Bellinas, but this is the Fire Shape is the one that the, the actual pattern on the inside, the purple or the fuchsia, however you want to see that color, is a little more stretched out. It has more of a, and, and then the, the tips of the petals look like almost like a flame. You know, like when you light a match, that's what they look like. I'm sorry I'm shaking. I'm trying. There. It's really, really pretty. And this one has that amazing signature bergamot um, fragrance, which, by the way, if you guys hear me say cardamom, I mean bergamot. I don't know why I always confuse those two. There's words with me ever since I was a kid in school. There's words that I confuse with other words and I can't seem to learn them. I don't know why my teachers used to... <laughs> <laughs> tell my mom it's just the way his brain goes <laughs> so i know that they i if you ask me okay tell me the name of this right i will say bergamot but if i'm speaking fast i'll say cardamot <laughs> all right so this is finally and fully opened i showed you guys this last time this beautiful beautiful antler um these are samurais there you go it's, it's called dendrobium, dendrobium samurai with um antennianum i was trying to remember that name and i couldn't remember it the other day antennianum which obviously stands for the antennas <laughs> and it's a gorgeous gorgeous little flower i wanted this so for so long and finally i found it at where udelis udelis has great selections of dendrobiums if you guys want dendrobiums definitely try them first they are amazing i got these chocolate ant uh, antler dendrobiums from them too they're so pretty. And this one's always shooting. If 
a spike once it starts this still has some more to go but it has it keeps giving me like long long canes so i don't know what i'm gonna do with these canes if they get any longer oh all right let's get out of here it is just so hot and you know what it is it's not so much the heat it's the humidity yeah. i think the humidity is way more than the heat all right guys i don't think there's anything else that i need to show you i've shown you quite a lot let's take a look over oh no wait 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 wait! i always forget her and she does not deserve that she's an amazing amazing orchid one of the top bandas around by mr ben of ben young the violeta gave me a beautiful spike this summer she this this is one of those bandas that i did not think it was even gonna make it and it just turned around and has given me so much joy it gave me a spike here it gave me all these roots so i cut what was it it was it was actually up there i cut up there and brought this down because it was too tall and now i'm waiting for roots to grow here so i can cut and bring this down so it'll be more compacted but look at that look at that flower she's gorgeous <laughs> and yes as the name implies it does smell like violets it does have a, a sweet floral violet fragrance by the way i also cleaned all this this was a wreck it had grass all the way up here. When I came back there, I go, what happened? Our vegetables, our squash, everything. I was like, what's going on? This is, this looks like a lot, a big mess, but it's not. This is rosemary, jam, um, squash. Everything is mixed in there. Lewis has been like planting away and everything is growing. All this, all this, all this vining here. You know what this is? This is cassava. I think it's cassava or, or yam yam this is yam he's got yam cassava and sweet potato yeah you know just in case that uh <laughs> what do they call it uh in the movies armageddon <laughs> we can grow our own food <laughs> oh my god i've been hearing that the world is going to end since i was a little boy oh we're gonna the world's gonna end. and my mom used to tell me that all the time don't listen to people the world's been ending since i was a little girl and then i i was a little boy now i'm an adult and i'm like oh i guess it's just a thing people say all right, guys, I looked around. I don't see anything else I would like to show you. Um, you know, let's take a walk over to the Dendrobium. Uh, I did show it, but it's even it's doubled now. I have to uh, tape it onto the, not tape it. I have to get my uh, tomato tape and tie it to the tree because the cane has produced so many spikes it's almost touching the, the grass and I don't want the cane to crack. All right, guys. I don't want it to be too bouncy since I'm walking. And you know, our land here is very upsy downsy. And that's when, when you guys see me walk that the camera shakes is because there's ditches and holes. We tried to cover them, but we're on top of a bedrock. So it happens no matter how much this land used to be super, super leveled. Look at this guys look at this massiveness now <laughs> i've never had a dendrobium of mine give me this many spikes three open two in bud so you see what i mean about the cane being so low but look at this how pretty now a viewer did kind of identify these and I looked and it looks very, very close. This is a natural forming hybrid that happens out in nature in Australia. So this dendrobium and Dave, if you're listening, I got I to gotta tell Dave because I haven't said anything to him yet. I don't want to break his. <laughs> it'll always be Cher's dream to him, but it does have a name. I will put the name on the bottom. Um, I will still call it Cher's dream because that's how I met it and that's how it'll stay. You know, <laughs> who cares what I call it? You know, as long as. I put the, the accurate name underneath so you guys know exactly what it is. But, you know, he named it Cher's Dream because for many years he tried to find out what this was and nobody, I mean, even I tried to identify it. And it wasn't until a viewer from Australia said, this is what that is. 
and I looked and it looked very, very, very close. I'll put the information there so you guys can see it for yourself and you tell me what you guys think. And then he gave me this other spike here, another one here, and then another one here. I had no idea when, when Dave told me, oh, she's, she's gonna take off really quick. I had no idea it was gonna be within a couple of months. I mean, I just put this up here. And it's it's buried onto that tree. Take it back. It's not coming out anywhere. Noisy truck. All right, I guess that's it. Now we really are finito. And I give you a little tour, a little walkabout. Oh, here's my vanilla. Look how it's doing. Mercedes, Mercedes, si estás viendo el canal, que estoy seguro que estás viendo, mira que linda está la, la orquídea de vainilla. Está preciosa. Parece que esta, este va a ser la casita de ella porque los, los otros árboles no... Mi orquídea no le gustaba. I was saying that Mercedes gave me this as a gift and I placed a vanilla orchids on other trees and they don't do well at all. I put it on this tree and look how great she's doing. She gets a sprinkler system hitting here all day and these are all from Mr. Dave, gift that he gave me. And look, everything is doing really, really, really good here. So that's just probably gonna just carry on all the way to the top and hopefully will bloom. And then these are my Monsteras that I fruit this year. I have, as a matter of fact, I'll take you guys inside and maybe, you know what? I don't think we're gonna have enough time. I have the last Monstera fruit. Maybe I'll do a separate, I'll do that. I'll do a shorts on the Monstera fruit. I already did one, but I think this one is much nicer. It's a bigger fruit and I could really show how it, it peels and demonstrate better. All right, guys, thank you for hanging out with me here at the ranch. It's a wonderful hot day. <laughs> and let me see, is there anything here? No, nope, nothing here. All right, let's turn this around. All right, guys, so that is the end of today's show. I had to go inside afterwards and dry up a little bit because it was just way too hot. Between the quick tent, being in there in that sauna, and then walking the whole ranch, it is just way too hot. I actually waited a little bit for the afternoon uh, so the sun could subside a little bit because this is too 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 hot <laughs> so anyways thank you for sticking by let me know what you think about this one i was going to do the what's in bloom later on this month but i think i'm going to have to do a third what's in bloom this month because there's so many spikes coming out that i know are going to be already blooming this month so it's going to be a very blooming month <laughs> but besides that i wanted to show you guys something <clears throat> i know you guys uh some of you have been following me uh, going to some of the shows and this year I actually became a member of the American Orchid Society So if you guys haven't done so yet check them out go online every month You get one of their illustrated uh, magazines that are really really nice. It's, the printing is beautiful It's good high-end printing full-color magazine I come from a background of graphic design and, and pre-press and I got to tell you this is done very very nicely this is not shortcutted or 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 low budget it, it, it's a very nice magazine and for being a member to have one of these magazines arrive at your door every month with great articles and and great first of all not just articles <laughs> this is one of the things i really like let me see if i can find it here we go it has a table of or well, not table of content but the names of the orchids and how to pronounce them see because a lot of us don't know how to pronounce so I've been learning a lot on how to pronounce these. I still pronounce them wrong here and there, you know, when I say them fast and then I catch myself and I'm like, I know how to say it, but I'm still saying it wrong. Plus you get a lot of ads for nurseries <clears throat> all around the United States that you can shop at and find out um, stories. Like I was just starting to read the story, stories on places like in the Philippines and Cambodia, not, not Cambodia, but um, I think there was one on Japan I was reading. And they have great, great stories on local orchids that they find in those locations. Like I, I was reading about this very rare white orchid that they discover, I think it was in the Philippines. It's, it's a new species or something like that. But anyway, great magazine, great perk. But this is what I love. <clears throat> this is my August issue. And on the very back, 
I won't even have to put, I could just use this, hold on. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Instead of me putting my, um, Coral Smith is gonna have their wonderful annual um, orchid fair together with the symposium, the slipper uh, symposium, Vanda and slipper symposium. I can't see because I'm seeing it backwards. So I'm trying to remember what, <laughs> I can't read backwards. And it is November 3rd and 4th uh, of this year, 2023. And they do a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful orchid show, guys. That is just for me is one of my favorite because it's kind of cool. It's not that hot in the in the spring is fun and there's a lot of more flowers, but at this one it's just I love it. And they always have um, extra things that you can look at, like this year, which Carl Smith is building something spectacular that I can't wait to share with you guys. I'm not able to talk about it yet because. Frank hasn't told me I could or I can't. I don't know if it's a thing I can't, could talk about. But, <laughs> but anyways, very soon you guys will see what it is. It's going to be spectacular. And if you can get to this show, you will be one of the very first people to experience something so unique and different that according to how Frank explained it to me and Julian and the other P and Hayden and the other boys at the staff, it sounds like an amazing, amazing place to go. So it won't be just about buying the orchids, it's about the experience of the orchids. That's all I can say. <laughs> so anyways, I'll put this down. If you haven't done so, try out the American Orchid Society, check out their website, and um, become a member. You know, it's a great, great um, society, and it's been around for a very, very long time. And the reason we have so much orchid information out there today is thanks to them. They have helped us together through a lot of big names like Pearl Smith, RF, the Motes family. So it's one big happy family that I've just begun to know and to meet. And I got to tell you, everyone is fantastic. I love everyone very much. And if you haven't been part of this community yet, what are you waiting for? It is a lot of fun. We're goofballs. We have a great time. We take work it seriously, but we know how to have a good time. So anyways, guys, I'm closing. I don't want to prolong this video anymore. It's probably already at the hour. I will see you next time. I am Nelson. You're watching Nature Now. And remember to always, always keep it green. I will see you next time.